Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of artwork in response to the artist Tom Wesselman. And you'll see I have already opened up a project and cropped it to roughly the size of Tom Wesselman's work. Not really a square, but close to it. And first thing I'm going to do is start working on adding a background. So I've already preloaded this picture of some wood that I found on Google. I'm just going to select that control C and control V to paste that in. And I'm going to place that down in the bottom left hand corner. The great thing about Tom Musselman's collages is because the found elements are all kind of different perspectives. Um, they are quite flattened and a little bit wonky. So I get away with um, putting flat areas of wood in the corner like that. Right, okay, so now I've taken the rectangular select tool and I've selected the left hand side and I'm filling it with a dark red paint bucket. Click on there and then I'm getting the rectangular select tool again and leaving a small line. I'm going to fill the rest with a light blue. There you go, paint bucket, and fill that in. And then I don't need the wood anymore, so I can close that. Then I'm going to get this picture of Starry Night that I found on Google with a nice white border around it. Select it all, Control C, Control V, and it gets pasted in. And then resize it. And that's going to be the picture on my wall. Remember to press shift as you resize to keep it the right shape. I can close that now. Right, next thing I need is a table. So I'm going to create a new layer in the bottom left hand corner. Click on that so it makes a new layer. And then I'm going to use the ellipse tool to, to make the top of my table. And then draw another ellipse downwards to be the side of my table. Making sure I press shift before I start the second ellipse. And then I'm going to fill the rest of the area with more ellipses and making sure I'm on the right layer. And then gonna choose white, click OK, and then go to the paint bucket and fill that area. Okay, then I'm gonna drag that to the top, make sure it's above my wood. And that's my table so far. Next up, I need to put some pattern onto the table. So I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to get the rectangle select tool. And I'm going to draw a thin, long rectangle. And I'm going to fill that with the same dark red. So I'm going to eye drop that red, get the paint bucket, and fill that rectangle. And then going to right click, duplicate that layer. So I've got two red rectangles. I'm gonna move the second one down below the first. And I'm gonna go back to the top layer and I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna go merge down and that's gonna merge those two together. And I'm gonna duplicate that. So I'm now moving two below the first two. And I'm gonna repeat that process, merge down and now they're all on one layer. I'm going to duplicate that layer. And it's going to mean that I then move four down to below the other four. I'm then going to merge those together so that all my red stripes are on the same layer. And I'm just going to stretch them so they reach over my table. So I've got to go to the right layer and then grab the handles. Unfortunately, they're right at the top, so I'm gonna have to zoom out for this one. So I just zoom out a little bit, which enables me to drag the handle up and go further. There we go, and move it into position. That's good, okay. Right, now I'm going to duplicate that layer again and on that duplicated layer, 
I'm going to grab the handle at the corner and I'm going to turn it. And if you press shift, it goes in to 90 degrees fairly easily. And I'm going to duplicate that layer and shimmy it over. So I've completely covered the table. And now I will zoom back in so you can see better. There we go. And I'm going to, one last time, merge those layers together. And next I'm going to go to the table layer, use the magic wand to select everything that isn't the table, go back to my lines layer and press delete. And that gets rid of all the lines that are hanging over the edge of the table on that layer. And then I can merge the table and the lines together. And that is my table ready to go. Next, I'm going to put a chair in. And I found this chair by searching for wooden chair on Google. And I found one with a white background so that I could easily magic wand away the background. And I'm control C, control V that in, resize it a bit. And then I'm going to go to edit, transform and flip horizontally. And that's going to change it to the right facing the right direction and I'm going to make it big enough and don't worry if it's hanging over the table at the moment we're going to use the same trick as we did with the lines we're going to go to the table layer and we're going to use the magic wand to select everything that isn't the table and then we're going to go to select inverse and then on the table with the chair on it we're going to press delete and that's going to get rid of the chair where the table is. So it looks like the chair's underneath the table. We're now going to start adding objects. And as with the chair, I searched for objects without backgrounds or with white backgrounds so that I could delete the background easily with the magic wand tool. And we're just copying and pasting them in and placing them on the table and resizing if necessary. Okay, and if we close each of the objects as we do it, it will make life easier for us. So I'm going to grab the serial, control C, control V, make that bigger, nice big box of serial, put it to the back. Okay, close that layer, we don't need that anymore. And now bananas, make sure we've got the mask off, control C, control V, make them a bit bigger, and then I'm going to put them down the bottom, and then close that, close the chair, we don't need that anymore, ah, nice cool glass of coca-cola lots of ice control c control v that needs a bit of a resize remember to always press shift when you're resizing objects so they stay the same shape no squishing or scratching we're not going to worry about the apple yet we'll get the coke bottle control c control v that needs to be a bit bigger. Maybe not that big. There we go. Next to the Coke. And we can close that now. Ah, roast chicken. Select the whole thing. Control C. Control V. And he's very tiny. But don't worry. When we enlarge him, he'll clear up. And I'm going to spin him a bit as well, I think. So grab the corner and spin him a bit. There we go. Good job. Close that. Pancakes. Yummy. Control C, Control V, and put those down in the bottom corner, make them a bit bigger. 
Good job. Close them. Spam. And control C, control V. That's a good size. Going to leave that as is. Put it in front of my ketchup a bit. Close that. Beans. Control C. Control V. And I want that there, but I want to put it behind my spam. So move the layer down. All good. Close that. Now I get to my apples. Okay, so I'm going to have two apples, but I'm going to use the same apple picture to do it. Control C, Control V. Ooh, that's big. I need to shrink him down. Remember to hold shift as you do it. Think about how he is compared to the bananas. Place him where I want him. And then I'm going to go to that layer, his layer, duplicate layer. So I get two apples and move the other one next to it, but behind it. So I move that layer down. Okay, now, ostensibly, you could call this a finished piece of work because Tom Wesselman doesn't really have shadows in his collages. But I can't help but feel like a tiny, teeny, tiny little shadow wouldn't be worth doing. So I'm going to go to the pancakes layer because I think the pancakes would be the best to put a shadow on, just to test it. And I'll move that to the top, and I'm going to double-click on that layer, and I'm going to go to Drop Shadow, and put it on Normal, Halfway Opacity, make sure I'm on 90 degrees, so basically straight down the shadow. And I just want the teeniest, tiniest, teeniest, tiniest bit of shadow. Just a little bit. Okay. And then what I can do then is apply the same thing to all the other things by going layer style copy. And then I select all the other objects, not the chair. Right click layer style paste. And it puts the same little shadow on all the other objects, which I think is worth it. Even though you don't have to do it. I think it makes it look that little bit better. And that is it. That is your finished piece in response to the artist Tom Wesselman. And that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you find it helpful.